Um, my name is uh, Yahya Ifawi. I am a consultant neonatologist and consultant general pediatrician. I do in-house neonatology on both sides in my, in my uh, province, on both sides of the river, and also I do um, uh, uh, general pediatric in St. Boniface Hospital. Uh, so today, uh, uh, the presentation will be about uh, using ultrasound by uh, pediatricians, uh, and, and I name them Frontier, whether they are emergency or they are uh, PICU, NICU, and even if a general pediatric want to assess a respiratory problem uh, by ultrasound. Um, and I hope that everybody is see what I am presenting. Um, so uh, my objective with this presentation is, uh, you know, basically uh, uh, you should be able to uh, uh, um, you know, you have the confidence to do uh, ultrasound for a respiratory problem by end of this talk. So I'm going to talk about the background, uh, the technique, and then uh, interpretation of some uh, respiratory problems. Um, so uh, the evidence, the body of the evidence are very strong to use ultrasound uh, in diagnosis of of different respiratory problems, uh, including RDS, uh, TTN, pneumonia, pneumothorax, uh, pleural effusion, chronic lung disease, bronchiolitis, and asthma, and collapse, and congenital malformation, and also procedures. Um, So the technique of using ultrasound on the lung, uh, um, because we are, we are not radiologists and because we are not familiar with the machine, so we select to scan uh, windows, an area on the lung, and these areas include uh, R1 or L1, which is the upper part of the anterior part of the lung, and then R2, L2, the right and left, the right and left, um, the right and left uh, lower part of the lung. And then we do uh, R and L3, which is the lateral aspect of the lung. And then we have two areas on the back, which is R, L5, R, L6, which is uh, looking after upper and lower. Of course, each window can be perpendicular can be perpendicular to the um, uh, to the ribs, or it can be uh, horizontal on the ribs. But right now, on, on this talk, we will only talk about the perpendicular uh, scan of the neck. Um, and these are also an, 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 an uh, indication of the area. You can see that the anterior right and anterior uh, left, and then you can see the lateral, and then you can see uh, L4, which is looking at the liver and the discipline. And when you start scanning uh, and you don't see, basically uh, there is air. So as all of you know that um, the enemy of the ultrasound is air. So if you don't see, then either there is air of the subcutaneous tissue or there is a pneumothorax or there is air outside the body because there is no gel. So you have to put a gel, make sure that uh, how you're scanning and reposition. Uh, so when we do ultrasound in pediatric, we have two uh, props. Uh, the uh, straight props, it can be sometimes look like a hockey stick, a hockey stick. Um, but sometimes uh, it is not. So these probes are straight, and when you do scanning, you'll see the image uh, like a square. 
and these images are uh, high frequency. So they, these, these probes, sorry, high frequency, so they can look to the uh, superficial surface of the, of the line. And then we have what we call the, the curvilinear, where it's uh, low frequency, so it can look to the deep structure of the lung, and the image will be cooning-like. It's like um, uh, short at the beginning and then widening out once you go down. So remember, straight, uh, high frequency, curvilinear, low frequency. Now, this is very important picture in understanding the ultrasound. So you can see a, a, a basic um, backbone of the of the lung of two uh, alveoli with three septi, and uh, you can see the bronchioles and pulmonary artery. And we have something here called uh, VPPI or visceral pleural parietal interface that will appear on the ultrasound. And very important to remember this number is seven millimeters. So the distance between two septies are seven millimeter. Um, so we have three septies and this is very important. If you remember this, probably you'll understand. Uh, uh, so alveoli, septi, the distance is seven millimeter and we have bronchioles and we have pulmonary arterioles. Uh, this is um, um, a picture of normal lung where you can see nice looking alveoli with septi and you can see the uh, bronchial and clear, no inflammation. When they get inflamed, you can see thickening of septi. You can see uh, a distortion of the picture. Now, when you start scanning, the first question will be, is the parenchyma of the lung is normal or not? And how you know that? You look at... Um, you look at the presence of A or B line. So I ask you a question. Is B line present? Is B, is B line present? Is A line present? Okay, so we'll start with one by one and uh, hopefully. Uh, so first we'll start with something called um, uh, A line. And A line are, uh, A lines are uh, horizontal, repetitive, reverberation, artifact, originated from plural line. What does that mean? Uh, when you do scanning, when you put ultrasound probe on the body, uh, and if there is air in your way, the ultrasound beam will be reflected back. And the ultrasound machine will understand uh, uh, there is a reflection back. And therefore, the ultrasound will make, try to make a mirror image. So you will start to see repetitive, um, image of the plural line. Uh, they are transfers. I remember A represent air. So again, they are horizontal line. They are repetitive and they are originated from the plural. And when they are present, that means there is air. Remember, A is air artifact. So when they are present, either the lung is normal or there is pneumothorax. And here, an example of uh, A line. So you can see that this is the scanner at the top. This is the mark of the scanner which means it's the upper part, and here's the lower part, here's the skin, and here's the pleura. And you can see a repetition of the pleura. These are not normal lung. These are not a lung. We are not scanning the lung. We are seeing a repetitive image of the pleura because the pleura contain air. So this is, and you can see the distance is the same. You can see the distance always the same a repetition of the pleura, uh, or what we call it A-line. Again, A-line is a horizontal line repetition of the pleura because pleura contain air. So when A-line are absent, we don't see A-line, we don't see air at the pleura, something replaces that uh, air. 
So it can be blood, can be interstitial fluid, can be alveolar edema, can be infection, can be tumor or mass. Oops. Um, so what is B line then? So we talked about A line, and now we talk about B lines. B lines defined are hyperequic vertical line, commit-like, and they are artifact too. And usually when they are present, they are overcome A lines. And it occurs because side-of-side -side reverberation artifact. It's there is, remember the picture that we saw at the beginning of the alveoli, there is two septis and in between there is alveoli. So in the septi there is fluid, in the alveoli there is air. So that reverberation cause uh, uh, B lines. And they are exactly same like, um, and they are exactly um, the, like the care B lines that we see on the X-ray. Um, so here is an example of B lines. B lines are vertical, cometal, reverberation, and they start from the pleura and uh, till the end of the image. If they terminate before the end of the image, they are normal. If they terminate to the end, then uh, they reach to the end, then they are not normal. You can see. So remember. We have A line and we have B lines. A line is the air, B line is the fluid. Air line is, um, air line is uh, A is the air and B is fluid. So the B line represent the um, septi of the alveoli. If they are minor, if they are seven millimeter uh, separated, there is seven millimeter between line and line. If they do not reach to the end of the image or if their number are three, they are normal. If they are more than three, five, and the distance between them less than seven millimeter, like let's say three millimeter, and they reach to the end of the picture, they are not normal. Uh, they mean that the uh, septi, because they represent the septi, are increasing in size, or the alveoli uh, air start to be replaced. So they, you have like more like fake septis. So um, when you have more uh, B lines, either the alveoli are filled with something other than air, or the septi get thickening. Uh, if they are more than three rare numbers and they have less than seven millimeter, that means there is wall thickening. Okay, but uh, if they are less than three millimeter, then they represent uh, alveoli. So remember, B lines are fluid and they represent septi. If they still separate it, then it's septi. If they start to close, then they represent um, alveoli. Um, again, this is the picture, remember, B line uh, represent um, uh, septi. So this is a B line, this is a B line, this is a B line. You can see there's only three here and the distance is seven millimeter. So if the distance become shorter, then they are abnormal. If the distance become three millimeter, uh, less than seven, but they are three millimeter, they represent septi. But if they become less than three millimeter, then they represent alveoli. Um, 
Uh, so we will start with the first disease, and with time you will start to learn what the meaning of A lines and B lines. And studies has showed that ultrasound is superior to the X-ray. As a matter of fact, we do rarely do an um, X-ray in our NICU, and they they've seen that the X-ray sensitivity to pneumothorax is 75, but specificity is 100%. However, ultrasound is more sensitive. But also the uh, specificity of ultrasound is very good. So how you diagnose um, uh, pneumothorax by ultrasound? You start at second intercostal space, at the midclavicular area. And try, if you are on the left side, try to avoid the heart. You always vertical to the ribs. And when you do scanning, try to wait until four to five respiratory cycles and always look to the pleural line and then you look to the sliding we will talk about the sliding and then see the mirror image of the ribs or what we call it track sign and then we'll talk about sky ocean beach um, interface on m mode and by then i hope that you will be able to do ultrasound to diagnose pneumothorax so uh, this is a picture of ultrasound taken by straight uh, probe and you can see the skin here subcutaneous tissue one of the ribs and the pleura and you can see some a lines air and you can see no ribs okay so when the baby start to breathe you'll see that the beeline is moving and sliding over the pleura and here is an example of sliding look at these b lines look at these a lines a lines are air horizontal b line are vertical and fluid and uh, if you look at this toad, you'll see it's moving. So we can see that the visceral pleura is sliding over parietal pleura. So they are moving one over another. And then you can see the B lines are moving back and forth. And I hope you can see this. And anybody, please, anybody, if I have a question, will answer that at the end. Again, sliding. I'm just repeating it, the sliding. Sliding is the movement of the uh, B lines back and forth in the picture, uh, and they represent movement or sliding of visceral over parietal pleura, and you can see the sliding. So I'm going to repeat myself again. This is the pleura, this is reverberation or repetition of the pleura, or we call it A lines. And you can see the rib here. So these are A lines. We don't see B lines here. Now we'll see normal lung sliding. You can see here is movement. You can see the B lines are moving back and forth. And now you'll see pneumothorax. You see there is no movement. Okay, people are coming and going. That won't happen next time because we will close the meeting at the beginning. So again, you can see that there is no movement. You can see that the pleura and visceral pleura are not moving, and you can see the B lines are not moving back and forth, okay? Don't look to the artifact movement. There is something called lung point, where you can see um, um, a sharp line of demarcation between sliding and no sliding. And here is the Sharpie. You can see that there is uh, movement in here and there is no movement. Look at it. Movement, then movement stop. You go here. Uh, we're going to repeat this slide again. You can see that these 
B lines are moving, the vertical line moving back and forth, represents sliding of the visceral over parietal pleura. And you can see in the pneumothorax, you'll see that there is no movement of B lines. The vertical lines are not there, it's not moving, not sliding. And uh, something that is, we call it uh, lung point, where it's, uh, there is a sharp line where the pneumothorax end, you can see a movement and then movement stops. Movement and then you can see here is there is sliding, here is there is no sliding. So absence of sliding mean the pleura is not moving. The visceral pleura is not moving over parietal pleura, uh, which means there is no air. So there is few things. Either it's a pneumothorax, and if you suspect your pneumothorax, you put M mode on the um, I'm gonna admit more people right now, but next time you know, that won't happen again because we will close the meeting at the beginning. But because this is the first time, so I know there is, will be a, a communication problem. So again, absence of sliding sign mean the visceral pleura is not moving over the parietal pleura. And uh, that mean Either there is air to prevent it sliding. And if you suspect air, you put M mode and you'll see something called barcode sign. And we'll look at the barcode sign. Or there might be a chest tube causing air. Or there might be a consolidation and over that there is a pleural fluid. Or there is effusion. So if it's pneumothorax or air, you'll see barcode sign. If something else, you won't see the barcode sign. Um, so, there is something called sky, ocean, beach sign. So you look at the sky and then ocean and then beach. And that means when you put your uh, probe, the uh, uh, horizontal on the uh, perpendicular on the ribs and you see two ribs and you take one picture and you put M mode on the picture and look at the M mode. You will see either seashore sign which mean you'll see the sky and then you'll see the ocean and you'll see the beach as a sign, as a sand. So if it's a sandy picture, it's a seashore sign, it's a normal, there is no pneumothorax. When you see, we don't see the beach, you see barcode sign or repetition of the ocean, then this is pneumothorax and then we'll see it here. So you can see this is represent the sky, this is represent the skin and this represent the ocean and here is no beach, while here there is beach. There is pneumothorax called barcode sign. There is no pneumothorax. So sky, ocean, beach. Sky, ocean, no beach or offshore sign. And here an example of it. So you can see there is sand here. Pneumothorax, there is sand here, there is pneumothorax here. Sand here, pneumothorax here. Barcode sign, sand. Sky, ocean, beach, barcode sign. Very clear barcode sign because we are at the point of the line between pneumothorax and non pneumothorax. Again, sand, barcode sign, sand, barcode sign, sky, ocean, beach, barcode sign. So barcode sign on M mode represent, uh, represent um, barcode on ultrasound on M mode represent pneumothorax. So again, what is barcode? Barcode represent A lines, which is the repetition of the pleura. And when they are present, they mean air. And when A line is present, it's either normal or pneumothorax. And when you see it, you put M mode and you will see 
that there is on a moon there is barcode sign. So instead of seeing the sky, the ocean, the beach as a sand and a normal lung, you will not see the beach. You'll see sky, ocean, and ocean, 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 or what we call it barcode sign. Again, you can see here is the sky, the ocean, and the sand. No pneumothorax. Again, this picture, you'll see normal lung, you'll see sky, M mode, motion, and then you see beach, you see sand. One minute, please. Um, so normal lung, sky, ocean, beach, normal lung, sky, ocean, beach, or uh, presence of skin, pleura, and then the lung, and pneumothorax, you will see sky, ocean, 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 and you see it look like a barcode on M mode. The other sign of uh, pneumothorax, we call it track sign. So remember, as we said at the beginning, uh, when you put ultrasound and there is air, the ultrasound will not see anything after air. Instead, it will reflect as a mirror image any tissue prior the uh, air. So you can see here is there is ribs, and there is reflection of the ribs. So they look, they look like a track. Okay, you don't see any lung. You see the ribs, the pleura, and the reflection of the ribs. So you see a reflection of this, reflection of this, reflection of this. So this is what we call it track sign. This is a baby that I scanned uh, in St. Boniface Hospital. Again, track sign, the upper part of the scan. Uh, the straight uh, or transverse uh, probe, there's ribs, there's pleura, and you can see there's air inside, and then you can see there is no B lines, there is no obvious A lines, you can see some artifacts, but you can see there is repetition of the ribs. Okay, this is on the uh, lower part of left lung. You can see that there is track sign, it's a sign of pneumothorax. So again, signs of pneumothorax, no sliding, where you don't see the uh, B lines moving up and down or uh, on over the uh, uh, parietal pleura. The second is you put M mode and you see barcode sign. You don't see the uh, sky, ocean, beach sign. And you see track sign. Another track sign, uh, ultrasound. On ultrasound, there is very important what we call it air bronchogram. Air bronchogram exactly like A line, but they don't cross the whole picture and they are not straight transverse. So they can be transverse, they can be oblique, they are short, and they are different ecogenicity. These are called air bronchograms. Okay, so now we'll talk about RDS. So we talked about A lines, air, which is transverse line represent repetition of pleura. We talked about B lines, represent septi. And we said that uh, if B line um, less than seven, more, if they are seven, they are normal. They're seven millimeters separated. If they are three, they are normal. If they are between three and five and the distance less than seven, but more than three millimeter, they represent septi. If they become less than three millimeter different, they represent alveoli. Um, so you can see that there is here B line. They don't reach to the end. 
you can see that the A lines are disturbed. So the A lines are not full from the beginning to end. Instead, and near the pleura, you'll see some air bronchogram. So air bronchogram always represent uh, subpleural consolidation. Air bronchogram, absence of A line, and there is a little bit of B lines. So this picture represent mild RDS. Um, type one is normal uh, lung finding. This is type two. So some air bronchogram, which is increased echogenicity, irregular, does not cross the whole image from the beginning to the end, and there is some B lines. Uh, now with more severe grade three RDS, you will start to see some area of consolidation and consolidation always um, um, followed by some B lines. And you can see there is wide B line, wide B line and see how wide the B line is because it's represent the pleura, the alveoli. So there is something filling the alveoli and you can see the interstitial septum. And you can see increased echogenicity, and you can see the B lines are one, two, three, four, five, and you can see they are widened, and they can see the distance between them are short, and you can see there is increased echogenicity, some air bronchogram, and you can see some consolidation. And you can see there is a little bit of pleural effusion here, and you can see that some fluid here. So this is type two RDS. In type, uh, Type 4 RDS, you'll see more pleural effusion. You'll see very thick uh, air bronchogram, which are looks like A lines, but they don't uh, cross the picture and they are not completely transverse. They can be oblique, they can be up and down, and you don't see much of A lines. A lines are almost disappeared. Uh, you can see here is white line or severe type of RDS. Uh, where you can see the alveoli fold of the fluid, you can see the sept, you can see that uh, the shadow of the ribs. These are the shadows of the ribs, okay? And this is um, alveoli filled with fluid. There is increased echogenicity. We don't see much of A lines or A lines almost disappear and you can see B lines uh, to the end of the picture. Now TTN, the difference between TTN and RDS uh, first, you will see um, increased echogenicity at the pleura. Of course, history will help you. Of course, history will help you. Uh, but uh, uh, the, in, in, in TTN, uh, both alveoli and alveolar septi are filled. So you'll see white out. You see white out. And uh, the white out not as severe as RDS. You won't say we, you see the B lines. If you see the B lines, then you'll see something called double lung point, where you see fluid and no fluid. You can see here is the B lines are wide size, reach to the end of the picture, and uh, all of a sudden you see A lines. So there is A line here, which is less fluid, there is B lines. Almost uh, double lung sign is a pathology and pathognomonic feature of TTN. Very important, and also there is increased echogenicity of the pleural line. So this is a TTN. Another double uh, lung point where fluid, everything is filled, the interstitium, the alveoli, not like RDS, you'll see some interstitium are not affected, and then you see some air. Again, interstitium are filled, Sometimes you confuse them between RDS, but you won't see a double sign in RDS. You can see that there is upper lung, less B lines, and B lines. Again, you can see here is the uh, interstitium are filled, but some of the alveoli are not filled because it's not 100%. You can see B lines here, B lines here. There is a space between them, so, and then you can see a pleural effusion. 
Um, so this is normal lung where you can see there is A lines and B lines does not reach to the end. This is abnormal because less A lines and B lines reach to the end. And there is a space between the B lines are not matched. So this is interstitial edema. Here you will see um, both the interstitium and the uh, alveoli are filled with fluid. So the air and interstitium are edematous or collapsed or filled with something. This is very important sign. You can see air bronchogram and they are uh, loculated and they are not like the A lines. They are very transfer. They are, you know, somewhat oblique. Uh, they are not identicals. So this is a consolidation. If baby has a fever and high white PC count, this is pneumonia. But here is, is a subpleural uh, consolidation. Um, now we'll talk about pleural fusion. Uh, the superficial, we use a superficial probe, which means the transverse probe, which means the uh, uh, high frequency probe. And always the marker of the probe should be uh, toward the head. Uh, and then if there is a fluid, remember fluid appear as a black. So if you see a black area, this is a fluid. And because there is no image, there is no air, so the ultrasound beam will cross. So that's where you will not see mirror. So you will not see track sign, but if you are looking at the uh, diaphragm, you will not see double liver sign or mirror image of the liver or mirror image of the spleen, and you will not see. And in addition, uh, because the um, air is there, then the picture will cross the whole body and then you start to see the vertebrae. So if you see a vertebrae on your ultrasound imaging, this is a pleural fusion or, or um, you know, something is filling the pleura. So again, pleural fusion, you use the superficial probe or the uh, transverse probes or the uh, straight probe. You put the marker to the head and you see a black area because you cannot see pleura. Pleura is filled with fluid, you don't see air. And because you see no air, then the beam can cross. So that means two things. There will be no mirror image of the area prior the pleura. And second, you, the beam will cross the whole lung to reach to the end of the lung, so you'll see the vertebra. So signs of pleural effusion, no mirror image, whether it's the ribs or the liver or the spleen, and then you start to see the vertebra. And pleural effusion is exudate, transudate, can be blood, and also we can um, see the size of the effusion. So to see it on the X-ray, you need at least more than 200 cc, while on the ultrasound you can see it while well, it's less than 50 mil. And this is um, um, uh, um, a scanning of the uh, of the of the lung. You can see there is the upper part here, there is the lower part, and you can see that there is a black area. It's a fluid. There is nothing else other than fluid can cause this. And then you start to see the vertebrae at the back. Again, you can see fluid here. You can see more fluid here, but this fluid are septated. Uh, there is dark here, not dark here. That's mean contain a little bit of air or they are less. So this is a tr uh, an exudate, not transudate because it's septated. And also there are different uh, quality or different contrast, more black, less black. So uh, you can say this is um, plural fusion, but they are uh, exudate, not transudate because transudate are more clear. Lying, you can see B lines, but you can see fluid. And you can see a mass here because it's, it's circulated. And you can see this is the diaphragm. Now, how we do pneumonia? Um, when we say pneumonia, we mean that we are losing the alveoli. Something is replacing the alveoli. We are losing the air in the alveoli. And if you're losing the air, then we will not see the A lines. Again, it's like the uh, pleural fusion. If there is consolidation, then the uh, beam of ultrasound will not stop. It will go through. It will reach to the uh, tissue at the end or at the back of the lung. And the uh, lung tissue start to be hypoechoic. 
the uh, lung tissue appear to be hypoechoic and also start to be wedge shaped and poorly defined. And the A lines uh, start to disappear. And then you see air bronchogram. And we'll see again because pneumonia also increase in vascularity and looks like liver. So if you put Doppler on the picture, you'll see more, uh, more blood. And pneumonia, it can be massive lung edema, look like massive lung edema, lower pneumonia, contusion, atelectasis. So we'll see pictures of pneumonia. So you can see here, there is a B line, air line disappeared. You see air bronchogram. Yeah, so anybody is asking about the B lines, we're gonna review it again and again if you have time. I don't have, I have time, so we can, uh, we can do that. Somebody is asking about the A lines. So the A lines are transverse lines. It's a transverse picture. They are hyper echoic. They are artifact. They represent pleura because when you put the ultrasound, when you put the ultrasound on the chest, the air is enemy of ultrasound. Ultrasound cannot pass air. And therefore, when there is air, any tissue prior that air is start to repeat, repeat itself. So you will see uh, if the pleura, you'll see repetition of the pleura. It's exactly if you put two mirrors, one, uh, one um, on each side, and then you can see repetition of your picture. So A lines are transverse line, they are hyperechoic, they represent the pleura, they don't represent the lung. If they are present, they mean it's, there is air. If there is air, it's either normal lung or there is pneumothorax. So you put M mode. And then when you put M mode, uh, you will see uh, either um, truck sign or mirror image of the ribs, uh, mirror image of the liver, mirror image of the spleen, or uh, you can put the M mode to see the barcode sign. Because if you put M mode and it's normal lung, you will see the sky, which represent the skin. You will see the ocean, which represent the pleura. And you'll see the sand, the beach, which represent the lung. But if there is um, air, you won't see the sand. You won't see the lung. You will see only repetition of the pleura or what we call it barcode sign. So that's A line. B lines are represent the septi. Okay, and they are three in the picture, and there is seven millimeter between them. If the distance between them become closer, but they're numbered less than five, they represent the septi. If they become more than five, and they're very close, then they're, they, they represent septi and the alveoli. Something in the alveoli, an air fluid or collapse in the alveoli that cause extra uh, B lines. So this is a B line and there is no A line. And you can see, we, as we call it, um, um, air bronchogram and we can see fluid. And you can see the, we can map the area of the uh, pneumonia. You can see there is B lines here, there is air, there is B line. And here there is increase in echogenicity. There is a fluid in here and there is air bronchogram. So this represents pneumonia. However, sometimes we have limitation because it can be hemorrhage or it can be a, a collapse or the, uh, the other clinical feature will help us, okay? Um, but this is pneumonia. Again, you can see fluid in here. Remember, when you see fluid, you'll see the vertebrae. So when there is fluid, you can see fluid here. And you can see here, um, a pneumonia. You can see air bronchogram, you can see fluid inside the area, you can see increased echogenicity, and you can see fluid in here, fluid in here, and the fluid in here. So this is pneumonia with pleural effusion. This will not appear on the x-ray because they are small. Now this is comparison between pneumonia and uh, normal lung. Um, so you can see this is the probe. This is a curvilinear probe because it's a cooning shape. 
because this is the uh, skin and this is the pleura and you can see a repetition of the pleura or what we call it A lines. There is no B lines, so there is air here. If you are scanning this, then you have to put M mode to see if there is a barcode sign or not. If there is no barcode sign, this is normal lung. <laughs> Look at here. There is B line started from here. I line disappear. There is black area represent fluid. There is wet shape, non uh, transverse increase conigency. It's a bronchogram and it's well lobulated. This is pneumonia. Okay, um, again, I'll be talking about air bronchogram. So they are hyperechoic, they are not transverse, they are of different direction. And so these are air bronchogram, very important to recognize. And one important thing is differentiate pneumonia from collapse. You put a Doppler, you see increased vascularity because it's inflammation. While collapse, there is no inflammation. So collapse, exactly like uh, pneumonia, but there is no Doppler on, on collapse. For increased vascularity mean pneumonia, no vascularity mean collapse. Very important is abscess, which is slightly different from uh, pneumonia. You see, same like pneumonia, but there is no air bronchogram inside it. So you can see only black fluid, and you can see around it increasing congenicity, and you can see some pleural fusion here and there. Uh, very important also to know what we call it micro abscesses, because that won't appear on the ultrasound, on the X-ray. So you can see that very small area of this is a magnificate magnified uh, picture. You can see a small uh, abscess here. That's a huge difference from the. Uh, from the um, x-ray. And you can see here is the atelectasis. You can see collapse here. You can see collapse here. You can see fluid. You can see fluid or edema. Oh, so there is a question how to differentiate absence from um, edema. So uh, I'm gonna go back to the abscess, okay? Abscess are loc loculated. Abscess, there is wall around it. There is increased echogenicity around it. Okay, but edema, there is no increase. See, this is edema, it's open. Okay, this is a pleural effusion. Okay. Um, so this is abscess again. There is loculated, there is increased echogenicity around it, and there is a plaque area where it's contained fluid inside it. Um, you see the collapse. Okay, there is a collapse here. There is pneumonia here, there's collapse here. So this is collapse, it's in, in, increased echogenicity. It's well lob lobulated, but there is no air bronchogram, and there is no fluid around it, and it's a homogeneous. And when you put Doppler, you will see no increase in vascularity. Well, you see increased vascularity here. So you can see collapse here, pneumonia here, collapse here. And you can see some fluid in here. Um, this is very important picture. Um, you see this is um, uh, a transverse probe, a superficial probe, a high frequency probe. And you can see the ribs in here. You can see the pleura and you can see A lines, okay, normal lung. And same way of picturing, you can see B lines. You can see a little bit of A line. So this is um, um, a TTN. So there's a fluid, these lines are separated, and there is some air. So they are TTN. Here's RDS. Um, there is increased echogenicity at the beginning. Uh, there is some air bronchogram, echogenicity of the pleura, um, the wall, and the, the interstitial uh, septi and the alveoli are filled with fluid. So this is an RDS. This is um, a chronic lung disease. So you see RDS, you see some lung point, 
and you see some um, air bronchogram and increased glycogenicity. Of course, sometimes hard to differentiate, but the history will help you. This is a baby who is more than 36 weeks on CPAP, need oxygen, then this is a chronic lung disease. Now, there is always limitation, okay? There's always limitation. Um, um, so you can see um, this picture represent pneumonia. While this picture uh, represent uh, atelectasis, and this picture is pulmonary hemorrhage. So they, it looks somewhat same because there is air bronchogram, air bronchogram, air bronchogram. But the history will help you. So the limitation of the ultrasound is cannot differentiate between um, anything replacing the air, but the history and the skill of the operator because the whole idea is disappearance of A lines, appearance of B lines and air bronchogram, whether it's lobulated, locate, lo loculated or not. So sometimes there is limitation of the ultrasound to differentiate between abscess, I mean pneumonia, atelectasis and pulmonary hemorrhage. But um, obviously uh, when pulmonary hemorrhage, you'll have blood coming, whether you're ventilated or non-ventilated or you're coughing or not. So you will, uh, while in pneumonia, uh, you will have history of pneumonia, you will have history of uh, increased white PC, you will have fever, you will have a different. And uh, with mapping more picture, you can differentiate more between, but always remember there is limitation of ultrasound. Now, very important is bronchiolitis. Now, there is very good study, more than one, at least three, four, that can diagnose bronchiolitis with, no more, with ultrasound and differentiate it from asthma. And not only that, you can grade the bronchiolitis. So we can get mild, we can get uh, moderate, severe, and life-threatening bronchiolitis. And how we do, we do the anterolateral, remember we said uh, R1, L1, uh, R2, L2, um, and R3, L, L, um, L3, and then the bag, which is uh, R and L5, R and L6, the areas of scanning. And, and from the, I'm not gonna go to the details of this table, but the basically is the less A lines, the more severe the more B line, the more severe. So the whole, this idea is A lines and B lines in addition to the air bronchogram and consolidation, other complications of bronchiolitis. So I don't want to go to the bronchiolitis, a little bit complicated because I don't want to confuse you. I want to review the presentation again before I, I, I stop. Um, but uh, there is a good study to, uh, a very good study to, uh, uh, um, diagnose bronchiolitis from the B lines and A lines and how to differentiate it and grade it and score it and uh, um, also see the complications which is micro um, atelectasis. Um, so we can see um, uh, bronchiolitis, you can see one, two, three, four, five, uh, six, seven, eight, nine uh, of, the, of the B lines. And you can see this one is area is, is severe time and more severe, more, more. Um, and you can see that there is some consolidation. You can see come, uh, um, some uh, air bronchogram in here, some fluid. And also you can see uh, there is an A line, but mostly is a B line. So there is less air, more fluid. There is increased ecogenicity near the air. And uh, you can see this one is less severe. There is more A lines. There is more distance between, and you can see that the you know the most of these are does not reach. So both of them are mild. This is a mild one. This is like a little bit more uh, severe, but I would say it's a moderate. Um, so this is a bronchiolitis. Also in bronchiolitis, you can see subpleural, very small uh, uh, subpleural consolidation. So you can see some fluid in here. There is air bronchogram and there is increased ecogenicity around it. You can see B lines, you can see the interstitium and you can see um, um, some um, lung point uh, as we say it in the, uh, you can see A, A B lines here. There is no B lines here, a little bit of A lines. So it's something look like a Chitian. 
but of course in a baby who is not newborn. Um, diagnosis of asthma is exactly like uh, bronchiolitis, but it's reversible. So you'll find the same, but when you give bronchodilators, you will see the changes disappear. But also you can see the complication of, uh, of asthma, which is pneumonia, pneumothorax, atelectasis, and chronic lung changes. So for those who are late, I'm going to go back quickly and review very quickly. So in ultrasound, oh, we can diagnose different diseases. We scan areas on the ultrasound on the right and on the left. Anterior part, we scan two areas, one and two. And lateral part, we scan one area, and then we scan the diaphragm. And on the back, we scan two area, above and lower. And each area, we can do transfers and perpendicular on the, uh, on the uh, uh, ribs. And these again, the areas, this is the interior, this is the liver, this is the spleen, and uh, this is the lateral, and this is the posterior scan. Um, if your image is unclear, there is air, or there is no contact. We use the transverse probe, the uh, superficial probe, the uh, high frequency probe, which is straight, and the picture will be rectangular. And we use the curvilinear, the low frequency, the deep structure probe. This is usually, you, we use it to look at the, most of our scanning will be this, but this one we will use it to scan the uh, diaphragm. This is a very important picture, alveoli, the septi is a three in a picture, and the distance between septi is seven millimeter. And that's what, this is B lines. If people are remember, this is B lines. Okay, and this represents um, the alveoli. So this is normal line. You can see that uh, um, the, uh, the, uh, the bronchiole and you can see the alveoli very thin, the walls and filled with air. Become more thick when it's abnormal and you can see increased vascularity and inflammatory cells. So is the lung is normal, you'll see A lines and B lines. Okay, uh, look at the A line and B line and then decide whether the lung is normal or not. What is A-line? They are air. They represent a repetition of pleura because after the pleura, when you start to scanning and you reach the pleura, after the pleura, there is air. So you won't see anything after the pleura. Therefore, the, uh, the uh, ultrasound beam get confused and will see you a repetition of the pleura. So A-lines are horizontal, repetitive, reverberation or repetition, artifact originate from pleura. When they are there, the lung either normal or there's pneumothorax. What A line represents? Represent air artifact. This is A lines. You can see the blur as here. This is one repetition, second repetition, third repetition, fourth repetition, fifth repetition, repetition, A lines, air, transverse. This is the above. This is the upper part of the chart. This is the lower part. So when there is no A line, when the A line is represented, the air is gone. So there is either blood or fluid. Okay. And there is B lines. B lines represent the septi of the alveoli. The reverberation between septi and alveoli. They represent the curly B lines on the X-ray. And they, when they appear, when they appear, the A line disappears. And this is B lines. See, this is one B line. I'm gonna. I want to try to stop the picture. This is B lines at to the end. You can see the A line disappears, and there is B line. A little bit of A lines, but mostly B lines. See, B lines are, are comet tail, They're like shohub, comet tail from the beginning of ultrasound to the end of the picture. Okay. So when the B lines, the, the diameter is seven millimeter between the B lines, where their number is. Uh, less than three, they are normal. Then they come three to four to five, and the distance is less than seven, but uh, more than three, they represent the wall. When the distance between them become less than three, they represent the alveoli, because the alveoli start to look like septi because it's filled with fluid. 
So again, uh, B lines are abnormal if they are more than five and they are less than seven millimeter. Okay, if they are less than seven, but more than three, they represent the septi. It's alveolar edema, okay? So again, there is B line, B line, B line, three, distance seven millimeter, normal. Distance is less than seven millimeter, abnormal. It depends, they represent the wall or the edema of the alveoli, or the fluid in the alveoli. That's, uh, Okay, pneumothorax. The, uh, this is uh, ribs, this is uh, pleura, and there is repetition of the pleura A line. So first you'll see sliding sign. Look at this, B line is moving back and forth. B line is moving back and forth, sliding of parietal pleura over viscera pleura. Which mean if there is sliding, mean there is okay. There is a lines. So uh, I'm gonna go quickly again. Then you see barcode sign. So you scan. You see a lines. You put your. You see a lines. You uh, then you put your M mode. Well, somebody is asking me, is this for um, a radiologist? No, it's for a pediatrician. This is a point of care ultrasound. It's a focus ultrasound for pediatrician. This is not for a radiologist. Um, so if you put M mode, you see sand, you see the sky, you see the ocean. So you see the skin, the pleura, and the lung. This is normal. You see sky, ocean, 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 ocean. This is barcode sign. This is pneumothorax. Uh, I'm gonna go quickly because I'm done. A lines, repetition. You see barcode sign, pneumothorax on M mode. You see A lines, but you see sand, no pneumothorax. Mm, chest wall, um, uh, sky, uh, ocean, and then sand, no pneumothorax. And then you see no sand here, pneumothorax on M mode. Track sign, as we said, there is a pleura and there is air. PIM will not pass away. Then it will show you the image of the tissue prior. So you can see ribs and ribs on both sides. Mirror image of the ribs called track sign. Another sign of pneumothorax, but this is on um, ultrasound, not an on mode. Another track sign, another track sign. Air bronchogram, same like airline, A lines but they are very short, they are wedge shape, they are oblique, they are haphazard, they are everywhere. RDS, there is increased echogenicity, there is some air bronchogram, there is increased B line, there is no A lines, but these B line, some of them does not reach to the end, the smile type of RDS. More severe, the B line start to reach to the end of the picture. There is some consolidation, some fluid, and there is increased echogenicity more severe RDS, very severe RDS. There is plural, there's a fluid everywhere. You can see black everywhere. So it's white on the X-ray, but it's black on the ultrasound. Very severe type of RDS, okay? There is air program, increased ecogenicity. There is um, um, all the B lines. This is, don't, don't look at this. This is the ribs, but see that all the are matched. This is TTN. You can see less severe type of, uh, there is increased ecogenicity and filled with fluid. No septi, no alveoli, nothing is appeared. This is a very important sign for it called double lung point as a pathological sign of, 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 uh, of, of TTN. You can see the B lines and then you can see A lines. That's the point between them. Another lung point. Um, another TTN, lung point, and there is a little bit of pleural fusion here. There is interstitial edema. Um, this is showing interstitial edema, various air interstitial edema, which means effect of alveoli and the uh, septi versus affecting the uh, uh, septi only, interstitial emphysema. You see the difference. 
Okay, you see less lines, more separated, more lines, more B lines, less separated because it represents the septic and the alveoli. And here you can see aeropronchogram represent consolidation. When you see pleural effusion, there is no air, then the picture can go through. Any mirror image will disappear. So A line will disappear. And then you'll see to the end of the lung. So you'll see the pleura, you'll see black area. This is pleural fusion. Another pleural fusion, but this is septated of two different colors. So this is um, exudate, not transudate. You can see fluid here. You can see mass here. You can see some B lines. So this is normal lung. This is fluid. This is mass. Pneumonia, you can see air bronchogram, you can see around it B lines, you can see a hyper echo of the air, and you can see black area of different uh, colors or different intensity. Uh, if you put doublers, you will see vascularity. So this is pneumonia. Pneumonia here, fluid here, fluid here. Oops, somebody is. So mute all. Okay. So uh, I'm gonna end here, but I'm gonna quit. So normal lung, there is A-line, there is A-line, there is pneumonia here. Okay, somebody is asking question. Uh, let me finish and I will. Okay, so uh, then air bronchogram is very important. Um, I'm gonna answer the question when I finish. Um, air bronchogram, very important. Okay, so these are wedge shaped, they look like A lines, but they are not transverse, they are not long, they are a different ecogenicity and different directions. I increase vascularity in pneumonia, differentiate pneumonia from collapse. This is abscess, you can see there is no air bronchogram inside it, just fluid and lobulated, increase ecogenicity around it. Micro abscesses, very small, less than one millimeter in size, never seen in the x-ray. Collapse, this, this is, Pneumonia, this is collapse. See the difference between collapse and pneumonia. There is no air bronchogram, and if you put Dopplers, you will see the difference. Um, so normal lung, RDS, um, um, uh, TTN, and uh, chronic lung disease. Um, these are pneumonia, this is collapse, and this is pulmonary hemorrhage. Sometimes difficulty to differentiate, but the history will help. Um, this is uh, bronchiolitis, how to assess and how to diagnose. I don't want to go to details of this because um, it's exactly the same way, but it's having grading according to this table. And um, this is two types of severity of bronchiolitis. And this is subpleural consolidation usually occur with the bronchiolitis. And um, asthma, same like bronchiolitis, but uh, reversible. And also you will see the complications of asthma on ultrasound. Uh, now, anybody want to practice, uh, we can start by copying this. I'm going to send you a file of this, and then you can write history. Uh, you can see some lab finding and your differential diagnosis, and then you start scanning according to this, according to the area, and you send me the report and send me pictures, and I'm going to help you if you want to start scanning. Okay, so I think I am done and I'm gonna um, see if somebody has any question uh, before I uh, end this. So if you can type the question, uh, if you want, if you want to chat before I end this. Okay, I'm gonna unmute everybody. Anybody has any question? Just to exactly. Well, just text first so I can either raise your hand or text so I can give you the permission because if everybody starts to speak, nobody will understand. So either text me or raise your hand so I, I unmute you. Hmm? Oh, you should tell me. Okay, who wants to speak? So please do not unmute yourself. Just raise your hand.
to ask question or text me. Anybody has any question? Okay, I'm gonna wait five minutes. If nobody has a question, I'm gonna close this. Um, uh, do, do you hear me, Dr. Yahya? I do. Oh, yes, yeah. thank you. I, I was suspicious about that. So thank you for your presentation. We appreciate your time. Um, I have a question about last, uh, uh, last slide you okay. did show mm -hmm. us on bronchiolysis. Okay. Uh, how many lines uh, you said, uh, so, so you regard the distance between the two lines more than seven, in B line, I, I mean. Uh, so, okay. it, so B lines to be pathological, uh, right. they should reach to the end of the picture, that's one. Second, yes. they should be more than five. Third, right. the in number. In number. number, more than five in a picture. In one field, you mean yeah. in one field? In one picture. In one picture, yes. Okay, okay so perfect. They, they should reach to the end of the picture. First, right. they should be more than five in their number, and the distance between them, less than seven millimeter. When you start to do ultrasound, you will appreciate that easy. Um, oh, so yes. If the number between three and five, they represent the septi. If they are more than five, they represent the alveoli, because the alveoli starts to look like septi. Okay. Uh, oh yeah, yeah. But in unzoomed, in unzoomed field, you mean? Yeah, we are not doing any zooming, any. Even, even if even if you zoom, it will same. It will get bigger and get smaller. Yes. Yeah. So. So the number will not change. The number of the line will not so change. We're we're talking about one centimeter. Uh-huh, yes, yes, Yeah. I get that. Okay, yeah, so Thank when you. you see B lines, it does not mean bronchiolitis, it does not mean anything. It means that there is fluid or the septa get edema. Okay, right. Thank so you. it depends on the you. situation and it depends on the case, then you start to determine which is which. Thank you, okay. appreciate it. Thank you. So, um, any more questions? Any question, anybody want to practice and do ultrasound, I'm happy to repeat. And also I'm happy to send you a copy of reporting system. We can share it by phone or by, uh, and then we can do it together if you're interested to start doing it. Okay, can I wait more, few more minutes before I close? Anybody has any question? If you want a question, raise your hand or uh, text me. Okay, I have seen more questions. Dr. Yahya, yes. hear me? Yeah, I do. Go ahead. Yeah, I, I, I have no question, but I just I would like to thank you for your time and this nice uh, presentation. It's the first time, so I'm, I'm sure it will be, we hope it will be a continuous uh, lecture, it's not just once uh, lecture. We can always repeat it. We can um, concentrate on one topic like mm -hmm. RDS or bronchiolitis next time. It just, um, I'm telling you uh, that this is available. It's not for radiologists, it's for pediatrician. Yeah, this is, ultrasound. yeah. This is what I mean. We need to return back and maybe we will try to practice this one. Yeah. Uh, I am joining you with my, with also one of our uh, radiologists. So I think we will back and we discuss this issue with uh, our radiologists, what is the possibility to do this in our well, hospital. The, usually the radiologist does not do the, uh, these things and... Uh, no, no I, I mean, I mean the, because the we, 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 we don't have portable, we don't have portable uh, ultrasound. So the reason so is, is when uh, a baby with bronchiolitis comes to the emergency, a radiologist will not be there. And it's unrealistic uh, that you uh, uh, ask a To radiologist. call him to come, yeah. yeah so uh, it's by frontier people, whose people over there. Yeah, we have more and more questions from Adil. Uh, so I'm gonna.
Adil, you want to say something? I unmute you. Adil? You, you are unmute, Adil, you can say, talk. Just. If there is any age limitation for the procedure? No, no, it starts from newborn till um, elderly. Definitely no, you just change the probe. Mm -hmm. You start from newborn, um, even uh, 500 grams to seven kilogram adult patient. So it starts from anywhere to anywhere. It just the difference is the size of the probe. The size of the image will not change. The number of beelines will not change, but the size of the probe will change. So you should have a small probe for small babies, and but large probe for large, uh, large body. But the presentation exactly same. It's exactly like adult. Okay, got it. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah. Um, um Doctor. Yeah, I have another question. Sorry. Go ahead. Go ahead. Um, um uh, how uh, can we can we use uh, because you know i'm a pediatric cardiologist can we re use the uh, face array small one prop small uh five to seven megahertz prop the face five, array one five to seven will show you the deep structure unfortunately you can see the diaphragm you can see right. the mirror image of the diaphragm on this prop uh, so if you put um, uh, your picture below the diaphragm anteriorly or on the lateral uh, and yeah. it's on the liver side and you see the diaphragm, if you see the diaphragm as a mirror image, that means there is air. Sometimes you mm -hmm. can see the sliding of the diaphragm and you can see B lines moving up and down. I use it usually uh, as a sign of correct intubation um, uh, because I see sliding sign. In addition, when I look to the goose sign, when I look at the uh, neck to see uh, if I am in the trachea or not. But uh, deep, it looks only on deep structure, unfortunately. It won't give you a good picture about the pleura because remember, um, we, are, we are only looking to the pleura. We're not looking at it. It's all artifact of the pleura. The other yes. important things um, is a lung ultrasound should be bad quality ultrasound. The more good quality, the less good, because you want the artifact, right? So the more artifact, the more artifact you see, the better the picture. So the less quality the ultrasound, the best, the better for lung. The good quality ultrasound is for the heart and for the bowel and other right. structure. But you need right. a poor quality ultrasound. You need a cheap ultrasound to do uh, lung ultrasound or lung imaging. Perfect, perfect, perfect. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you. Appreciate it. Okay, any more questions? Okay, uh, so is asking, Muhammad, um, you can ask. Muhammad? Also already asked, so I'm lowering your hand. Rana is joining us at the end. So, anybody has a question? I'm gonna unmute all. Okay, who has a question? Any question? Any question? Okay, I'm going to end this, if no more questions. Okay, well, thank you for joining me. And everybody have a lovely, uh, it's early morning in my time, but I know you are, it's afternoon in your time. So thank you very much for joining me and have a nice day. Bye-bye everybody. Thank you. Bye.